What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Shapes.io. Now Shapes.io is sort of a minimalist Factorio styled game, but I will go as far as to say if you enjoyed Factorio, you are going to love this game. Now it just released on June 7th, 2020 on Steam and is the product of the hard work of single developer Tobias Springer. So Tobias has done an amazing job putting this game together, only been on Steam for a little over a month, and is coming up on a thousand reviews now. It's at 978 total reviews as we speak, and they are all listed as overwhelmingly positive. Now Shapes.io is a game about building factories to automate the creation and processing of increasingly complex shapes across an infinitely expanding map. Now, the game is very basic as far as what you look at, but it runs super smooth. Uh, it provides everything that I would want it to provide, and it's really a lot of fun. Now, another thing that's just great about the game, and you all know, you've heard me rant and rave over the years about the amount of hours of enjoyment you get per dollar spent on a game. This game is $3.99 US, so without a doubt, your entertainment value per dollar spent is gonna be through the roof. Now there is a large wiring update that's planned for the future here and the price of the game will go up to $5.99 then, but even at that price, it's just an unbelievable value for your amount of entertainment. Now we're gonna hop on in and check out a map. Be kind y'all, this is the very first map. My current map, I'm in the learning process. It's a complete mess. I will uh, easily admit that. So let's go ahead and pop on into my world and take a look at it. Now, before we start looking around the map and continue any further, I did want to take a look through some of the settings. So we've got a very nice soundtrack going with it. There's only one request I personally would have about the settings, and that would be a volume control. Uh, right now, the volumes in the game are on or off. Uh, there's no way to control the volume. You can mute the volume if it's too loud, uh, being the sounds and the music. I personally would love to see an individual control because the music is actually very relaxing. I would just like to be able to turn it down or to adjust the level appropriately. Now, taking a look through the settings, we've got a decent selection of languages to choose from. Uh, we've got the regular interface scale, uh, full screen or windowed, the muting. It does have a colorblind mode, which is very important because color is going to be an important part of the game. Now, there is uh, a very robust, it's very basic, but very robust hints and tutorial system in the game, which I will definitely be using, so I'll show that off. It gives you all the information you need right there just to get through the game and complete it which is just awesome. Now, another thing that was really cool, we're all familiar with dark mode and light mode uh, through whatever systems we use on the interwebs. The game offers a dark mode and a light mode. That's just awesome. I chose the dark mode. I think it looks very pleasing. Uh, auto saves, uh, I've got it set to auto save every two minutes. It will uh, look at your refresh rate of your monitor i'm at 144 hertz here that will help you control your frame rate the game actually runs amazingly smooth uh, we've got zoom sensitivity movement speed multi-place uh, this is for putting multiple of the same type of building or structure down at the same time uh, you won't have to you can hold shift and just spam click as many of the structures as you want or you can just turn this off and you will have to deselect each individual project you're going to build uh, we've got smart tunnels. Uh, as you scroll through, you see it's got decent settings. As I mentioned, my only request would be individual audio controls to control the volumes. Now, popping back on into the game, we see we have a hub structure here. Now, the hub is telling you what your level is and what your next objective is. As you see, I've got everything feeding into the hub, and here's where my train wreck comes in. Uh, yeah. You're not going to want to build everything right on top of the hub like this, like I did. 
Uh, going forward, I will definitely not do this type of setup. I'm actually looking forward to starting fresh and scrapping this map just because I did train wreck it so bad. So right now, this is the shape we're looking to deliver. So it's going to be a half circle combined here of two different colors, a light green and a light blue. Now, in addition to the exact project we're looking for, it's going to tell you what is going to unlock. So I'm going to unlock a chaining extractor. Uh, currently, the way I have it set up, I've got to chain uh, my extractions together manually. And I'm assuming a chaining extractor is going to uh, let you avoid some of this stuff. Where like I've got all these extractors going out and I've got them all combined into one line as I wanted to pack the density of this particular line because I'm going to be pulling off of that for the next structure that we build. Now, your shapes are generated as gray as a standard color, and of course, you're going to have objectives to color different shapes, will, which in some cases will require, say, like just turning a gray square blue by injecting a pigment in. Uh, other shapes will require custom colors where we're going to combine, say, blue and red to create purple, where over here we're putting out purple circles. Now, if all I need is this shape going in, well, why do I have all these shapes, other shapes feeding? And that is the upgrade system. The upgrade system will require multiple shapes to go in. Uh, as you see, I've already upgraded several. Uh, for example here, to get to tier three of our belts, distributor, and tunnels, I'm going to need 900 gray circles, which I've already got in the hub. I'm going to need 3,000 lower half circles, which I've already got in the hub. And what I'm working on right now is I'm going to need 15,000 total purple circles. That's going to allow me to upgrade to the next tier. Uh, same thing with, say, extraction. Uh, right now, I'm working on getting some more shapes in. Uh, I've got the squares I need. I've got the quarter of the circles that I need and so on and so on. This will increase and become more complex as you get into higher tiers. Now taking a look at what we have here, we need this shape. Now, how on earth do I make that shape? Well, we can go down here to show hint and it's gonna tell us. And we're gonna combine those to create that new shape. So it does give you a tutorial system right here in game that makes it super easy to figure out how to make whatever this confusing shape is next. So if we take a look at what I've got going, well, you see I've got this line packed. Now, the reason I've got this line packed is I'm gonna be, or I have plans to use off of this line. Now, I'm, I need to actually produce this particular color. So if I just expanded out this factory a little bit further, I'm going to be able to pack this line and then that would allow me to pull directly off of it. So if we take a look, first things first, we need more pigment going in. So I started to work on my little pigment factory. We're combining blue and green to create kind of a teal aquamarine type color. And we just want to expand that out. So first things first, what do we need to do? Well, we need to go ahead and continue these lines on down uh our last one here can go what it can go directly in to our pigment combiner and then let's get all of our pigments going in here now we're going to need what we're going to need some bridges to tunnel over here so let's go ahead and throw those in and i think something like that will get me and then we're going to pull directly off. Actually, I missed one of the bridges here uh, with my expanded out. Now we're going to pull this green directly off. We're going to throw it into the tunnel. And then now we see this particular color combiner is appropriately uh, being fed. We're going to do the same thing here as we need to feed these other three. So let's just go ahead and pop these in. And then now these three are getting fed as well. So now we're going to need some 
get these up. Oop, I've got this face in the wrong direction. Uh, just a simple right click will uh, remove whatever you've got placed so you don't have to worry about that. And it's time to just make this line a little bit denser. As you see, I clicked instead of shift clicking. So I can use the hotkey to re-select that balancer. Or if you don't, if you're not sure which hotkey it is, you can just hit Q and that's going to replicate whatever you're using. Now I'm going to want to shift click on these down now and I can just keep placing more of the same. And then we want to get this line filled and that is filling up our pigment line a little bit quicker. I'm assuming it is going to get backed up here pretty darn quick. We're going to have to see how that goes. But now that is going to allow us to continue production on this particular belt to get a little bit more density. Now, I don't have it unlocked, but there is blueprints available where you'll be able to just drag over an area and then copy it to paste it somewhere else. However, I've gotta be a level 12 to unlock blueprints, so I can't do that quite yet. And now we've got a little bit more density on this line. Actually, we haven't even combined it all yet. Now we should see some nice density, maybe. It's still not packed. We could go one more, I believe, and uh, really get this line packed up. We're gonna wanna pull off this line is the reason, the reason I went on and made that line more dense as it was. Now, what do we wanna do next? Well, we're gonna need some of those circles because we know we need a green half circle. Now that appears to be a bit of a light green. I think that is the default green color though. So let's go ahead and get some of this green pigment headed over to an area where we can start producing some green circles. Now, first things first, we're gonna need our circles. So let's just go, hmm, let's go something like this. We'll put a combiner here and we've got a decent amount of circles flowing in. Say right here. Now, I believe I'm gonna have to do that three in between each one again. Let's just start off with three of them. Now, first things first, we need our circles being fed in. So if we just bring our line straight down, we then throw a balancer in. We're gonna be able to get this machine fed with our circles. Now we have to get our pigment in. Now our pigment's got a little bit of a ways to go, which is fine. We can just go ahead and drag it all up to the top. Let's just go ahead and uh, bring it over. We'll just tunnel right across this. And now we've got our pigment going in. So we want to do the same thing, basically. We're gonna want to uh, to get our, our balancer in, and then we're gonna want to tunnel. So let's go ahead and throw our three balancers in. Uh, we're gonna need to tunnel the pigment from here to here, and then across this one. And then we're going to want to feed our pigment into our different machines. Uh, we've got the output going right here. And now we've got some green circles coming out. So what do we need to do next? Well, we know we need green half circles. So we need the top half of these circles. Uh, the first thing we should do, let's just go ahead and combine these lines. So we'll throw, uh, say, a balancer... Something like this, maybe. And that will get all those green circles packed onto one balancer. Well, what do we need to do next? Well, we want to cut. So we're going to have a, a green circle coming in, and we're going to have two going out. So let's go ahead and feed it, and let's take a look at what we've got. Now, we are going to need the top halves. Now, since we need the top halves, we're going to want to rotate these a bit. So right out of the gates, let's go ahead and get our rotators in. Uh, first things first, we want this particular rotator to go counterclockwise. Now, as you see, it is currently set up to be clockwise. We can go ahead and change that. That was another unlock. So we wanted that one to go counterclockwise well we want this one to go clockwise so let's go ahead and hit t again 
we'll change it back to clockwise. And then now taking a look, we've got two of our top halves as we want. So we can go ahead and balance those out to one line and we've got two top halves being completed. Now we want to pull off of this line and come up to a set of splitters. Now, or pardon me, a set of combiners. Now, how do we want to do the combiners? Well, we're going to do it the exact same way. We want, we're, we've got two inputs and one output. Uh, say, why don't we go say something Let's go like this. Let's give it a little bit of space. Actually, I don't think we'll need too much space in between on these. And we'll go with three of these as well. We're going to want uh, to go ahead and split off. And we can get these three machines fed with our half circles. But now we need to go ahead and not only create the half for these, but we're gonna need to find a way to get them fed in. So first things first, let's go ahead and switch or split off of this line in kind of a main bus kind of feel to it. We're gonna want to jump right across here and then we can just go ahead and get these guys coming right on up. Now we need to cut these. So since we're gonna be doing some cutting, what do we want? We want to do the same thing. Now what we're looking for here is bottom halves once again, which means this one we want to rotate counterclockwise, this one we want to rotate clockwise. So if I go ahead and go uh, clockwise rotation there, we'll change this one to counterclockwise rotation and now we've got two bottom halves which we can then combine into one line and now we've got our bottom halves coming up. Now, how do we want to get our bottom halves into here? We'll take a look at it. We're gonna pretty clearly need to tunnel across. So let's go ahead and get our tunnels in. This one can actually go direct. And then what do we wanna do from there? Well, let's see. This one we know can run direct. So we're gonna be good there. We need to branch off and come up this way for these tunnels. So let's go ahead and bust out the trusty balancer again. We'll put it right there. And how do we want to do it? I think something like this would get the job done. And that will allow us to, yeah, it'll allow us to branch into those and still stretch the rest of those shapes up. So now we've got all of our combined shapes coming out. Uh, we're going to want to, once again, combine these onto one line just to make life a little bit easier. Uh, let's go ahead and do that right here. We'll stretch this one down, and now we've got a full line going down that we can then bring right on over into our hub to get this particular shape automated and going in. And there we go. And now we see that is racking up. We're gonna have to get 1800 of those to unlock the next, which is gonna be a chaining extractor. So that is a basic look at Shapes IO and how it all works. I'm actually anxious to continue playing this game a little bit more. It is just a lot of fun. It gives you that Factorio feel where you've got some problem solvings and some logistics to figure out and just really an absolute blast to play. Now, all the links will be down in the description below. Make sure you head over and check it out. Uh, as I mentioned, the game is $3.99 on Steam right now, but it will be going up to $5.99 in the future. I can't say that enough. If you enjoyed Factorio, you're gonna enjoy this game. It's gonna give you lots of hours and enjoyment at a very low price, and it definitely gets a thumbs up from me. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, y'all. I'll see you next time.